So right away, we put, put our golfers in the address posture and we could identify them without doing an ISA test, without knowing a whole lot of anything. We can see in this address posture that based on the differential of structure, we can, we can make the assumption that our gentleman on the left is going to be a wide ISA bias and we're gonna see this narrow ISA on, on the right side. So if you were to look at their back pocket uh, area, you're gonna see the expanded representation in the posterior outlet. On the, on the left, which would be your wide ISA bias, you're gonna see that compressed representation um, very clearly um, in the two, two structural differences. Now, this is the takeaway in, in the golf swing. And this is gonna be the first, the, the first change that we're going to see in regards to the shape of, of the, the pelvis and the thorax. We're gonna focus in on the pelvis mostly because it's very easy to see in these circumstances. The thing that I want you to understand about, about this takeaway, um, very specifically, if you look at hand position and you look at the club position in, in this, this takeaway position, if you can see the fact that we've got the delay strategy on the right side, we're gonna have a more eccentrically oriented anterior outlet in this position, which means that the guts are gonna follow the path of least resistance. So they're gonna be going down and forward to the right. So we've got two right-handed golfers here. So the guts are gonna follow that position. This makes it terribly convenient because now all I have to tell you is follow the club head and you're going to know exactly where the guts are at every moment during this golf swing. So this is the representation of the eccentric orientation of the anterior outlet. The guts are going in that direction and the club head is going to follow. If the guts don't go here, I physically have to push myself into the, this position. It makes me terribly inefficient. I've now increased the amount of muscle activity that I need to achieve the position. And right away, we're in, we're, in, we're in swing fault land, we're in compensatory strategy land. If I can anteriorly or eccentrically orient the anterior outlet, then I have an effective takeaway. But this is gonna be the beginning of the early phase of propulsion in the golf swing. So if we were talking about walking, this is where we have this strong ER, ER representation and and barely enough internal rotation, we have this initial ground contact. So this is the guts moving down and forward um, as Eric steps forward with his right foot. This is also the guts going down and forward in this exact same direction as Eric is stepping with the golf club. So to finish this early propulsive representation, so this is this is our, our really strong superimposition of internal rotation. So this is where we're gonna capture our heel, this is where we're gonna capture our first metatarsal head. So the, the pelvic representation that, that I have shown on the left is now magnified. So, so the delay strategy increases on the right side. We're gonna see a later representation on the, on the left side, which is gonna have the overcoming connective tissue bias. And we have this eccentrically oriented anterior outlet. But we are now starting to superimpose the IR because the, the right side now has to slow down because we're going to go into another phase transition where we have a shape change that, that's going to be coming up. Um, as we move from the, the takeaway position, I wanted to give you the side view of this so you can get that representation in your head. So again, the anterior outlet eccentrically oriented, posterior outlet concentrically oriented relative to, and then there's our cutoff at the uh, ischial spine. So in the golf swing, this is a relatively small space, but I, I got this on a little bit of a loop so you can actually see the space that we're covering. So this representation covers the entire phase of early propulsion in the golf swing. So I'm, you'll see it a few times. So this is your early representation, okay? The reason that this represents early is because once we get to lead arm parallel in the backswing, this is the phase transition where we have to capture the internally rotated position. Right away, you gotta be thinking like, oh, the wide ISA is gonna have a much easier time capturing this position and you would be correct because their bias is already toward this structural representation of the eccentric posterior outlet, concentric anterior outlet. It's not that our narrow doesn't capture a greater degree of this internal rotation. It's just that it's gonna be a whole lot easier for the wide ISA to capture this bias. But the important thing here is to see the difference between the anterior outlet representations. So 
In our early representation with the eccentric layered anterior outlet, the guts had moved down and forward. As we moved towards the IR uh, structural representation and the, the shape change, what we need to understand is we have a concentric orientation of the anterior outlet as we moved into this internally rotated position. The important thing to recognize here is we just shoved the guts upward. And this is going to become incredibly important when we start talking about how the energy is transferred in the golf swing. Because what we have to do is just like lifting your pencil up in the air is we have to move the guts up to create potential energy for swing efficiency. Because if we don't do this, then we're going to have to figure out some form of compensatory strategy where we can store and release energy. But typically under those circumstances, number one, it's going to create a very erratic golf swing. Or number two, which is what we don't want, we're going to use a very strong compensatory strategy that not only affects the, the consistency of your golf swing, but now we're going to start loading structure and, and tissues that we don't want to load. If we look at this from the front, this is what we're going to see, um, relatively speaking, where we're going to see this expanded representation towards the, the uh, right posterior outlet. We have a little bit more expansion on that side because we're going to have yielding connective tissue behavior. But I wanted to give you a, a representation that, you, that shows you that even in this, this ER bias situation, we're going to get some expansion in that, that right posterior outlet uh, representation as they take the club to lead arm parallel. And this is the initiation of middle propulsion. As we move to the top of the backswing, so the top of the backswing is actually going to represent the, the dead center middle representation of middle propulsion. So the cool thing about this is, and if we look at the initiation of middle propulsion, this is where we have the anterior outlet move up, which puts the guts upward. And in this circumstance, as we go into the, the peak of the backswing, we are effectively squeezing out all of the relative motion of the system. So, so to get to the peak of, of the backswing, there is no relative motion in this circumstance. So we went from a position where we had relative motion. Now we're creating a twist here to gra literally grab the guts from the elevated position where you're going to twist it. In, in this case, because we're at right-handed golfers, we're going to twist the, the guts up and to the right. So now we have an elevated position and we're actually pulling back the, the rubber band on the slingshot. The pelvis orientation does not change. We have to have something stable that we're going to twist against. So if we let this pelvis go, and we try to twist into the, this position, we have no storage of the, the elastic uh, energy that we're gonna get from the yielding connective tissue behavior. That would not be in play. We might have some element of gut position that would give us some potential energy, but we have significantly reduced our, our capacity to, to store energy in this circumstance. Um, the other cool thing about this, because we've got a, a really good representation of a wide on the left and a narrow on the right, you can see the difference in their helical angle because they're going to try to create the greatest degree of motion in this circumstance. It's always going to be achieved on your helical angle. So obviously the narrow is going to have a more vertical helical angle. And then our wide is, is on a flatter representation, which would represent the, the oblique angle. So just to give you a representation of what I'm talking about with the uh, with the twist here, um, it, I have my, uh, my my little rubber stick that has some grooves on it, and this is literally what's happening under this circumstance. So again, this is not going to be relative motion that takes us from lead arm parallel to the peak of the backswing. This is all connective tissue behavior. You can kind of see the twist through his through his clothing and through his shirt, um, but but this is going to be where we're literally grabbing hold of the guts as we twist. We're making this space smaller. The reason that we know that we're making it smaller and the reason that we know that this is not relative motion because there is absolutely no way that you can take a breath in this circumstance. So whatever air you had in you at the time of lead arm parallel, that's the amount of air that you're going to have inside of you at the top of the, of the backswing. If you would let that air out, you're actually, once again, you're taking away the yielding capabilities and you're going to reduce the amount of storage uh, of energy that we're going to get at the top of the backswing. So if we we're looking at the, the dead center middle P, this is, again, this is going to be where we're pushing down into the ground. We're starting to, to, to shift the tibia over the foot. The connective tissue on the bottom of the foot 
in this circumstance. So with a right-handed golfer turning to the right, the connective tissue on the bottom of the foot and the connective tissues that you're going to see represented in the axial skeleton are doing the exact same thing. So this is just one of those other little fractal representations that are, that's just so cool about recognizing that all of these activities are propulsive activities. Now we're going to come back down to lead arm parallel in the downswing. And this is going to represent the, the end of middle propulsion. So we've got a little bit, a little bit of a transition in regards to the, the connective tissue behaviors, but we're still holding on to the IR shape of the pelvis. But here is the coolest thing about all of this. As we move from the peak of the backswing to lead arm parallel in the downswing, the guts are actually unweighted. They are actually floating in space and they are about to fall, but they are, they are literally about ready to go into a free fall. So um, if anybody's ever done uh, a power clean or any of the weightlifting activities, and we talk about dipping under the bar with a second pull, that's the exact same thing that's happening here. If you're in a vertical jump and you descend quickly into the vertical jump, you literally unweight the guts. Um, there's a relationship between um, power output in a golf swing and your ability to produce a vertical jump. So this is why that relationship exists because it is literally the exact same mechanism that we're gonna see in all of those circumstances. The same thing is projected here in, in the golf swing. So guts in free fall, you've essentially unquitted the grasp that you had of the guts that held them up in this position. And this is the release, literally the release of the guts at this 